talking and let's get into the story time. So I had already pre-recorded this story when I actually was in El Salvador. Um, but I think on my channel, I still like to keep um, a little bit of class <laughs> and a little bit of respect. So I felt like I was like literally just editing the video and I was just like, you know what? This video is a little mean and it's like a little too much detail. Um, so I just decided to pre-record, like re-record the video just to like, you know, keep everything copacetic here. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it because I hate long drawn out videos. So I went to El Salvador about a month ago with the guy that I was dating and I'm going to say was dating, but no shade. He kind of just left my house. Um, <laughs> and I know it might ruffle some people's feathers. Um, that I'm even saying certain things in this video, but honestly, I don't really care because this is my channel This is my story to tell and this is my life and um, I'm gonna post what I want to post so It is what it is. So to get back into the story I went to El Salvador about a month ago with a guy that I was dating and to give a little bit of context this is kind of like one of the most toxic situations that I've ever been in. And I know you guys are probably like, damn, how many toxic situations can this bitch be in? Because literally all the story times on my channel are about like my toxic men situations. But child, like, listen, I don't, I don't know what it is. They just literally all toxic. This one just happened to be, I would say like top three toxic just because like we fight every seven to ten business days like i don't know if that's normal it's it's not normal i don't even know why i said that it's really not a normal thing i don't feel like anybody should be fighting or arguing every seven to ten business days like that's kind of insane right like who the fuck wants to fight every fucking week that's crazy so let's just say this man is literally in the doghouse every seven to ten business days i just personally think he likes the drama i think he's one of those people that likes to like that maybe like thrives off chaos a little bit because I feel like most of the problems that we have be like so small, like so micro that it's like, I can't even explain to somebody why we're even beefing right now because it literally makes no sense. So that's that. And I also feel like this man could be a tad bit insecure. I think he's definitely an overthinker. I think, um, like I said, he thrives off chaos. He kind of likes the drama. He kind of likes to stir the fucking pot every seven to 10 business days. And as I tell him, like, yo, for real, like, you don't even let peace be still. Like, by the time we get over one thing, we're back into some next shit. And even with the El Salvador trip, I feel like that was us literally just getting out of some shit. And then we decided to go on a trip to, like, make up and be peaceful or whatever 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 so so mr crazy books this flights for us to go to el salvador we go to el salvador we are having an okay time everything is good for the most part the vibes are good we're not fighting we're not arguing until about the third day in el salvador so while we're on the trip he's like complaining a lot everything's an issue first things first he was sick and I, I like i'm not gonna like say that's what made the trip bad because you literally cannot help that you're sick so he's sick for the first two days with that and everything else like everything else is a complaint it's always a complaint i'm this i'm that i don't feel good uh i look skinny Oh, the food is bad literally all the food that we ate in el salvador and i don't know I'm pretty sure, I hope you guys watched my first and my second El Salvador vlog. We ate mad shit. Like, when I say this man had a complaint about everything we ate, for the most part, I would say, like, 99%. It's probably, like, one or two things that was no... I'm gonna say one thing, for real, that was no complaint, but everything else was a fucking complaint. So, the food was either over season, under season, not enough ingredients, it's this, is that... It's not that good after I fucking cleaned the plate and then clean my plate and then drink everybody's fucking beverage. Like, everything was a fucking complaint. So that was one, like, thing that was pretty fucking annoying on the trip. Then this man is literally insecure about shit that he has no business being insecure about. So I feel like what really turned the trip sour is that we were on our way from 
Lali retired to San Salvador, right? We're in an Uber. My coworker calls me. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of back context about that, right? One day, Mr. Crazy was in the doghouse and I blocked him. And the crazy man decides to pop up at my job. Mind you, I work overnight. Pops up at my job and happens to see me conversing with one of my coworkers in the parking lot. I'm to say, like, if this man was doing his job well, he would you would think he would have sat there and listened to what me and the guy was talking about, right? Because I know if I was doing that, that's what I would do at least. If I come here and I'm spying on somebody and I'm I'm seeing him talk to somebody, I'm gonna at least listen to the conversation. No. This man did not listen to the conversation. I mean, this guy was having, which is my coworker that I'm cool with. And I've been cool with for almost 10 years now. We had like literally a platonic conversation. And from that point, when that man seen me and my coworker talking in the parking lot, now all of a sudden, me and my coworker are fucking. We are talking to each other. We're this, we're that. So now I'm technically no longer allowed to talk to my male coworker, which is like not fucking happening. I'm never going to have nobody tell me who I can and can't talk to, especially if I'm not doing nothing wrong. So that was that. So while we're on the trip, my coworker calls me and you know, like sometimes I guess I just like have diarrhea of the mouth and I just wear it out like, oh, um, so-and-so's calling me. And he goes, what? Why is he calling you? Why is he calling you while you're on vacation? No, no man is gonna call my girl while we're on a trip. No man should be calling my girl at this time. Mind you, bro, it's like fucking 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And no shade, I work overnight. So even if the man decided to call me at fucking 1 a.m., I feel like that's still a reasonable time because I work overnight. And we don't even know what he was calling for because I didn't answer because I knew that was going to be another issue. So I just didn't answer. So that was another issue. Like, oh, why is your coworker calling you? Now I'm sneaky. Now I'm a slut. Now I'm a whore. Now I'm all these things because my coworker decided to call me. It's like, honestly, damn if I do, damn if I don't. Because if I would have answered the phone, that would have been me being disrespectful. If I didn't answer the phone, now I'm sneaky. So that was that. So now we have him complaining about the food, him com him being sick, and my coworker calling me. So now I'm Miss Sneaky's life. So there goes that. Now, um, even when we was in Lolly Bertat, I think he kind of felt the way because I like my pictures a certain way. So he's flying my drone for me, right? He's flying the drone, and I want my pictures a certain way. I, like, this is not fucking uh, Call of Duty. You're a fucking drone pilot. Nigga, I want you to fly the drone a certain way so I could get a certain angle so I could get my content. Duh. That was an issue. So now we have the drone. <laughs> we have the complaining about the food. I'm a Miss Sneaky slut. And um, he's sick. So those were, like... Already four problems that we done had within the the first three days of the trip. So there goes that. So now I think what really like was the straw to break the camel's back. We were on a food tour. Um, we were on a food tour where just like there's like this little like I guess you could call it like a flea market of food or whatever. So we're walking and um we're eating. So we had like a few things to eat from like different vendors or whatever of course all that shit was a fucking complaint he hated all of the food but still ate it all um so then that was that so our very very last stop right this lady is like she's selling bag juice right a bag of juice literally so she gives me the juice but she doesn't tie it so now i'm sitting there trying to tie the juice he's sitting there trying to tie the juice and the lady is like, oh, I'll, I got it. I'll tie it for you. So I'm like, okay, let her tie it. He has the juice. I'm like, let her tie it. Because this lady literally ties bad juice for a fucking living. Let her tie the juice. Once I said that, this man completely went off. I'm tired of that shit. You're mad fucking disrespectful. You never feel like I could uh, do anything. And uh, uh. You're literally complaining because I let the lady tie a bag of juice like if that's not the craziest shit ever like i don't know what and that's what i mean by some of our problems are so fucking micro that it's hard to even explain because it's like what for real 
So this man like storms off, storms off, mind you, where like in El Salvador, like on streets we don't even know. He storms off. I'm just like walking casually because at this point I'm like, bro, for real, I have a phone and I could get around just like how you could get around. So I finally catch up to him and he's like just standing there on his phone. So I'm like, oh, like you're leaving? No answer, right? So then I see a car pulls up and he's talking to the guy. So I'm like, oh, this is your Uber? No answer. So you know what I did? I just got in the fucking Uber. Because, bro, you're not about to leave me in El Salvador. You really was going to leave me because I let a lady tie a bag of juice. Like, if that's not the craziest shit ever, bro, like, I don't know what it is. So he just gets in the Uber. Well, I get in the Uber first. He gets in the Uber. And he's going off. Like, you're, you're this, you're that, you're sneaky, I can't trust you, you're fucking your co-workers, um, you, you, what, I'm disrespectful because I let the lady tie the bag of jukes, bro, it was just like, I, at that point, I was just, I kind of just logged off a little bit, I'm like, bro, like, I'm, I'm not even doing this with you, I'm in El Salvador, like, I'm a real traveler. I'm in El Salvador. I'm not about to argue with you on my trip. I'm not about to argue with you on my trip about, especially about something so dumb. Like, we're in another country. Like, back at home, all right, I, I see that's, like, your pattern. But in another country, bro, like, where I'm trying to enjoy myself, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not. I'm not about to argue with you. So, I let him go off. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm this, I'm a slut, I'm this, I'm all these things. Oh, give me my passport and give me my um my wallet or my credit cards. I'm like, all right, they're in the room. So when we get to the room, I'll give you all your shit, no problem. So we get to the room, he's storming up to the room. Mind you, I have the room keys. Storming up to the room. Mind you, this whole time I'm being disrespected. I'm being called out my name. I'm every slut hole bitch that is under the fucking sun. And for real, I really did not deserve that because one, nobody should be getting disrespected at all. Like, it's so like unwarranted. Like, you're literally going off for no reason. So, no shit. I'm just letting him go off. So, he wants to leave. I give him all his shit. Here's your wallet. Here's your passport. Go ahead. Bye. So now he's like proceeding to pack. So as he's packing, he's like packing all his shit in a suitcase. But the problem is, this is my suitcase. I bought the suitcase. I gave you the suitcase to use for the trip. So if I'm a slut hoe bitch, Miss Sneaky Slut, you're gonna leave Miss Sneaky Slut suitcase here. And hold on, didn't I buy you these shorts? Didn't I buy you these shirts? If I'm a Miss Sneaky Slut, you're going to leave everything that I fucking bought with Miss Sneaky Slut. Like, I'm sorry. You want to come out your face? I'm going to show you who's a real Miss Sneaky Slut. Leave all my shit here. So as he's, like, packing up, I'm telling him, like, nah, you're going to leave my stuff here. So he's leaving, and I'm literally giving him all the stuff that he came with that's his, and I gave it to him. So as he's, like, leaving... I put all his stuff outside and I locked the door because you decided to leave and you wanted to leave. So bye. There's your shit. It's outside. Nothing else in here is yours. I expedited the process for you. Goodbye. He proceeds to go downstairs, come back upstairs with a room key, busts down the door and no shade. I have like full footage of this incident, but I decided I'm not going to post it. This man decides to barge in the fucking room, hysterical. Oh, we're not supposed to be fighting. And oh, you're not supposed to be. We're supposed to be together. And I just love you so much. And it's like, bro, for real. Like, get some fucking help. This man needs some help. Somebody find this man some help. No shade. Like, are you serious? So now, because I called your bluff, you thought I was going to tell you to wait. You thought I was going to tell you, like, oh, no, please stay. Please, no. No, get your shit out. Get your shit out the room and go do what you do. I'm a sneaky slut. Why do you want to be with a Miss Sneaky Slut? I never understood that. If I'm all these things, why do you want to be with me? Like, I'm not understanding it. So I'm telling him now to, no, like, get the fuck out. I'm not, 
sitting here going back and forth with you. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I'm not going to beg you to stay. Like, get out. So now all of a sudden he's having a fucking asthma attack. He can't fucking breathe. Bro, do you even have asthma? And if you have asthma, where was your asthma pump? Like, what? What was I about to do for you right now in this situation? Even if you was having an asthma attack, like it's nothing I could do for you anyway, sir. The hospital is up the block and around the corner. So you should go actually go there. They're probably the only person that could help you in that moment. After all that shit, I'll call security because it, it just became too much. Like it was, it was becoming too much. It started to become an episode of fucking, I don't even know. Like it was, it was just bad. So I called security, security came, security escorted him out. And I don't know where the fuck he went after that, to be honest. I enjoyed the rest of my <laughs> El Salvador experience as a solo traveler, which I feel like what the fuck else was I supposed to do, right? Cry, let you ruin my trip. Fuck no. <laughs> So I enjoyed the rest of my trip as a solo traveler and that was that. And even after all that drama, you would think like that would be it, right? You would think after he had to get the fuck out the room, that would be it. No. So like I proceeded my trip, I proceeded on with my trip. And then like maybe two days later, I get a text from like his fucking cousin. Yo, this is like a family full of nut jobs. No shade. Like, I get a text from his cousin like, hey, I'm reaching out to him. He hasn't been answering my calls or texts. It's like, bro, I know this is you. Like, if this is not you, the crazy bloodline in your family is just too fucking strong. I get a text from the cousin. The cousin's like, hey, I've been reaching out to so-and-so. He's not been answering my calls. And I'm just like, well, so-and-so left me like two days ago and I haven't heard from him since. And he's like, so you guys are on a trip together. You don't know his whereabouts. Like, and I've been reaching out. He hasn't been answering. It's like, bro, I know this is you. Like, I know you reached out to your cousin to write me. And first of all, why the fuck does your cousin even have my number? Like, <laughs> Like, now that I'm actually, like, retelling the story, it's like, it's me. It's my fault for actually putting up with the bullshit. It's actually my fucking fault. So, um, I told him basically, like, I, me and your friend or your cousin, whatever, broke up. We stopped talking, and I don't know where he's at. He left, and I haven't heard from him since. The cousin then proceeds to tell me that no one has heard from him, and, like, that's so not like him and he's somebody should have some type of contact with this man. So my dumb ass feeds into the crazy bullshit and I text him. I said, hey, your family is looking for you. Um, I think I lied into some shit. Like I moved our flights up and to reach out to me by 7 p.m. tonight. I didn't get no response. The next day, I'm still getting contacted from the cousin saying that no one has heard from him. Uh, his family members haven't heard from him. So I then, I'm like, all right, listen. Like, I told him, like, for real, I hope you're being dead serious. Because don't make me do, like, mad extra shit for no reason. Like, I'm not in the fucking mood. And to be honest, I really didn't give a fuck because this man is a grown-ass fucking man. Like, what do you mean you're missing? Like, I assume when you left, you either got a new hotel room or you fucking went home. Like, why Like why does it have to be a thing where now you're fucking missing? Now this is a thing of national security. We all have to fucking look for you. And I'm not about to look for you on the streets of El Salvador. So I did what the fuck I was supposed to do. I called the fucking embassy, bro. Like, these people literally had me call the fucking embassy. I called the embassy, filed the fucking missing persons report. And of course... Once I told the cousin that I filed a report with the embassy, guess who showed up? Mr. Crazy Man. So that's what I mean. Like, this whole shit is like a fucking casserole of crazy. Like, why? Why? Like, you, what? You wanted me to reach out? You wanted me to worry about you? Like, you're grown, bro. Like, y'all gotta chill. <laughs> y'all really gotta chill. This is like a thin line between love and hate. Like, y'all really gotta chill out.
basically it, y'all. Like, that's basically the story of how my trip became a solo trip. And, yeah, I'm still attracting the crazy niggas. I don't know what that's about. I mean, hopefully one day soon I'll, I'll be able to find somebody semi-normal. But until then, I'm just attracting the fucking crazies. So that's basically it, guys. Like, in the most respectful, peaceful uh, way possible. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to see more videos.